No. All right, then they will be uh, accepted as presented. And that brings us to the director's report. Sure. Try to keep it uh, nice and sweet this month. Um, the library has been very busy, a lot of programs going on. Um, I guess I'll start with facilities. The town has patched a sinkhole that was in the driveway here. And we get pretty mm -hmm. nice. Scene. Thank you, John, for pointing that out to them because it would seem to help. Um, and the elevator at the Rathbun has been repaired as of yesterday. So those are both big things. Uh, program news, as you guys know, uh, we did the Rathbun Fairy Village, the Halloween Hamlet Harvest extravaganza um, on the 21st of October. And it was part of the Halloween in the Village event at East Haddam. And it was a massive success and a massive thank you to Janet, Pat, and the friends of Rathbun for putting it all together and making it fabulous. Uh, my kids were there, they enjoyed it. There was a fire dancer, there were, oh my God, the balloon animals. Like they did like Sonic the Hedgehog and Elsa and mermaids and octopi and like all sorts of like crazy balloon animals. Wow. And yes, this balloon artist is going to be a, a fixture at future events for <laughs> sure. Um, and it was just a really, really good night, really good evening. So definitely if you didn't make it this year, try to go next year, because um, that is an annual event that is not to be missed. Uh, speaking of annual events not to be mixed, segue, um, the Holiday Craft Market is coming up, uh, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, November 19th, from 10 to 4 at the Rathbun Library. I believe there's around 20 vendors uh, selling their wares. One of them's here tonight. <laughs> um, definitely uh, be sure to stop in. It's a great place to get Christmas presents, or sorry, holiday presents. <laughs> hey, I don't care what you buy it for. Just go there and buy something. <laughs> Um, and after uh, the holiday craft market wraps up, the community lions are going to step in and do their annual light up the holidays auction at the Rathbun. Uh, and that's going to run from Monday, the 21st, I think. 22nd? I think it's going to be Tuesday, the 22nd, Tuesday, Tuesday, the 22nd. Yep. Yeah, to okay. Friday, December 2nd. Perfect. And that's the big auction party. So definitely mm -hmm. don't miss the auction party. Um, so more details about that will be on our website soon. Um, the, uh, there's another adult craft night here at EHFPL that Lisa's been working hard on. She's been driving all over town and collecting wine corks, which uh, people were more than happy to help with. A lot of, a lot of wine corks in this town. <laughs> um, and they'll be making, making wine cork ornaments, uh, which are gonna be really cool. Um, Anastasia has been working on another teen art night, which would be this Friday from five to seven. Does she have enough wine corks? Um, I think she does actually. I think she's she's more than set, but if you wanted to leave a couple here, she probably wouldn't say no. Okay, yeah. okay. I didn't say anything. <laughs> I, was, I was looking for an excuse to pop open a bottle of wine. Yeah, you, know, yeah. you gotta help the library. It's important to be involved in your community. And this is one way you can get back. So yes. You just have to pay attention to make sure it's not a screw top or it's got a plastic clip. Oh right. yeah. Try again. Try again. No, <laughs> yeah. I pretty much just focus on the label. I buy my wine by the mm. I like mm. the graphics. <laughs> pretty label. Pretty oh, label. That looks like it'd be delicious. <laughs> um Junior Dino Rangers. Uh, this is going to be a great kid event that's going to be here at EHFPL on Friday, November 18th. Um, kids are going to be like, there's these little tiny dinosaur eggs that they have, and they're going to crack them open and find little dinosaurs inside. And then local dinosaur expert Dave Cassenti is going to be talking about um, dinosaurs, obviously. Mm -hmm. So it's mostly an elementary school aged event. So it's going to be very simple. Also, we talk about the Dinosaur National Monument and all the cool resources that are uh, there. Um, and then I just had a list of all the other programs to make sure I give everybody shout outs because I do like all these big special events, but I don't ever want to neglect the fact that Nancy runs two book clubs a month and they're awesome. Karen runs, um, you know, two, you know, story time and a baby time each week plus American Girl Club, and those are all doing phenomenal as well. Um, and um, uh, Joe and Amanda are a huge help with the, uh, the preschool that comes over for story time here at the library. So, uh, you know, everybody's working hard on these programs and it's a real group effort. And that's why we have about 30 to 40 each month. So it's, yeah, which is a good segue because we are, um, I did the annual report, which was our numbers from the year, fiscal year 21, 22. And they are close to the numbers we had uh, in 2018, 19, which was our last quote unquote normal year. Mm -hmm. um, so I included the report in the like the full 20 page report that I sent to the state. I'm sure all of you read it thoroughly and memorized every detail in there. 
I had a question on page 47. Yeah, we don't have any books in Polish, but other libraries oh, okay, do. Thank you. Um, thank if you have one you'd like to donate. <laughs> Real question on the report. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, so I pulled a couple stats and put it on this report here. Um, and the um, state is going to compile all the reports from all the libraries, and that'll be available on the state library website for anybody at home that's interested. Uh, that should be ready by the end of the year. It's called the um, CT Public Library Statistical Profile. And um, yeah, anything you want to know about Connecticut libraries is in there. Just remember, it's not always apples to apples because it's like, hey, how many books did you circulate? Well, our circulate for two weeks, other libraries do three weeks. So logically, mm -hmm. we would have a higher rate of circulation than they would. So don't take those numbers like apples to apples. Mm -hmm. But it is interesting to look at nonetheless. Any questions? Shortest mm -hmm. report ever. I think I'm getting it down. Next month will be a tweet. Next month we'll get pay farm, right? That's it. You know, yeah. Forget <laughs> blue check. Mark. Right. Um, so just, just regarding the report and just sort of like in general, do we have any um, things coming up that are in conjunction with any other agencies in town? Oh my gosh, yes. The biggest thing, one of the biggest things we do all year, certainly the biggest thing this library does, this branch here does all year, um, Family Night on Mood is Green. Uh, Kids Night on Mood is Green is coming up December 1st, Thursday, December 1st um, at 6 p.m. Santa Claus, uh, you know, Nick and Carol, the Clauses, they'll be here. Um, they're gonna light the tree for us. Um, then they'll be sticking around at the town hall, handing out presents and candy canes. Um, Lisa Conroy, who is a mad genius and totally my hero uh, from the Parks and Rec Department is setting up a snowball fight in the gymnasium at the town office complex. So uh, the logistics are still being worked out, but it's going to be incredible. So <laughs> definitely show up there. Uh, Natalie from the preschool is gonna be there um, doing reindeer food. Uh, Youth and Family Services is uh, arranging a whole, for a whole bunch of volunteers and Santa to be there. And then, of course, the library and the friends of the library are there to, uh, with Mrs. Claus. What time does it start? So that's going to be 6 p.m. on December 1st. It's a Thursday, Thursday night. Um, yeah, the tree will be lit. The holidays will commence. So hmm. I have right. to talk to the Leas about getting decorated before December 1st, but that's not a library problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And um, I really did enjoy the joint program that the uh, library did with uh, the Historical Society. Um, I know Bill's on the board of the Historical Society. You know, the, what, next meeting, maybe when he's here, we'll see if they have any other plans to collaborate with us. Um, I think uh, kind of, uh, you know, getting something particular to our historic collection that might be worked into a presentation would be interesting. But we can talk about that some other time. All right, does anyone have any questions or comments for Michael before we move on to other committee reports? All right, finance committee. So we, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, Bill wrote up the minutes. I usually have him uh, give us the report, but he's not here. Um, uh, just uh, pretty much everything is on track as far as this year's budget. Um, so there's no surprises there. You know, maintenance. Well, probably the maintenance is going over with the like with the, the elevator, elevator bill fix. hasn't arrived yet. Yeah, but they did charge us a $125 extortion. Sorry, fuel surcharge that we had to pay. <laughs> That's the uh for rolling the truck. R right. The minutes. Not even oh. for a call, just oh, in right. general. Thank you. Um, so. where'd they drive from me? <laughs> used to drive from Jersey. Those bills are oh yeah. to pay for the travel time. Yep. Now there's a uh, gentleman that lives in town, so the travel time's a lot less. A lot of this was covered in Michael's uh, report, but you know, of course, the big item was um, just keeping track of what's going on with our 2023-24 budget process. Um, Michael, uh, yeah. can you just uh, give us an overview of yes. when, when that? So the budget kick uh, that? budget kickoff is next week. Um, 
forget which time, but it's um, Irene, uh, uh, for selectmen has called all the department heads together and there's gonna be a discussion about the budget, what the expectations are, kind of what the tone is. Um, I don't think it's a wish list year, sorry. But, mm -hmm. um, and then of course, after that big meeting, there's usually uh, one-on-ones that I have with uh, the first select person and then often the finance uh, directors there as well. Um, and then kind of once we have that meeting, you know, we make what our priorities are clear, which yeah. we discussed uh, in detail at the um, finance committee meeting, which of course are legacy uh, payments for the employees that have been here for a long time, making sure that they're making, you know, um, appropriate. Uh, yeah, appropriate scale. Yeah. Uh, pay scale. Our new intern shouldn't be making anywhere near what the people that have been here for 10 or 15 years. Are here. So we want to make sure that that is, that is uh, adjusted and addressed. Um, we're looking at perhaps maybe adding another full-time person here as we, at EHFPL, as we do have several full-time people at Rathbun and only one full-time person at this branch. So addressing that inequity. And then um, those, those are the two big priorities. More money for books is always nice too. Yeah, yeah, just, uh, you, you know, if we, don't if we don't increase that line item, we're actually, it's actually a decrease in, in materials. Inflation has hit books too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It absolutely has. On what lines and if we have an on what lines have we seen the inflation effect? Yeah, all of them. All of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, we we'd often talk at the finance committee, we often talk about how there's very few lines that are, you know, we have control over that are changeable, you know, like the electricity is going to be with electricity, it's the, you know, like all those things are sort of beyond our control and we budget for them based on previous year's realities and, hope, and you know, like hope for the best, but, um, you know, it's not something that we can you know, have a lot of effect on. So the, the things that we have to focus on are the services, trying to get enough money for the services so that they, we can keep doing the job we've been doing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a big shock will be electric bill. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you know, <laughs> energy, whether it's heating oil or uh, electricity. Right. Yeah. Which uh, we have one of each. Right. So. <laughs> Yeah, Eversource was talking about a 20% increase. How much? 20%. Oh, okay. Going from it's 12, their generation right now is 12, a little over 12 cents a kilowatt hour. And I think they were talking 20 ish. And like, and like, they have to file we are the like, highest, like in the country, right? Connecticut. Because yeah. they have to file. So they're just going to prove it even more. Pretty mm -hmm. soon. For January, get solar. <laughs> I already have it. Um, we also talked about how, uh, Michael, we, there is a new um, town finance director. Yes. Is that their title? Yeah, finance yes. Director. Yep. Finance director. Um, but uh, I've not had an opportunity to meet with them yet, but that'll be a part of next week's Soon. meeting. And then, you know, and then we can. I mean, we've always had a good working relationship with the town and the staff there. So um, we'll cultivate a good relationship with the new finance director. Absolutely. All right, uh, anyone have any questions for finance? Um, so that brings us, uh, well, to governance didn't meet, right? Yes, but we do have items to discuss. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Should we, we can do that under unfinished business I brought up. Um, okay. Is there? Um, yeah, I just wanna briefly talk on okay. the committee assignments and the calendar. Um, we can do it either. E, uh, yeah, let's do it under unfinished business because that yeah. was a big topic, topic of discussion last. Um, okay meeting and then we can just dive into that um, uh, program committee. We met this past Monday. Um, I've been trying to get a hold of uh, the senior center about mailing down availability to have somebody come for uh, Alzheimer's um, like talk. And I sent, I don't know how many emails and then I ended up being down at the senior center for my COVID shot and physically saw Brad and he's like, yeah, I got your emails. He goes, I've just been really busy. I said, all right. 
But, um, Mary, Mary Mary was gonna, to, to Mary's going to talk to somebody at Historical, Historical Society. Society. And then Crystal mm -hmm. even wrote to me and said she also has someone to contact for Headline, something in Headline. And Public I, call? Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And I said that you were going to be talking to somebody about uh, the uh, Historical. Historical Society. And then I gave Mary your card that you gave me on mm -hmm. uh, Medicare Maven, mm -hmm. um, having her maybe come in and also speak. And um, obviously all the programs that um, Michael has mentioned and that kind of stuff. And that this was my last meeting with them because I wanted to go over to governance. Okay. All right, any uh, questions or any anything else with the program to discuss? Mary's gonna take. This is place. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> I told you I was going to say that. All right. Well, that all, all sounds good. Uh, exciting programs coming up. All right. So now we're into unfinished business. Uh, we already discussed budget up, updates. Waiting, you know, there'll be a lot more to discuss after next, you know, in December. Um, building updates, we, at finance committee meeting, we were all just sort of like staring at each other because there was nothing dramatic with either of the buildings at the moment. We're like, okay. <laughs> and great to hear that the uh, elevator got fixed and the hole was filled. Mm -hmm. So um, aside from that, you know, again, it comes down to the budget and capital improvements and the maintenance line. But right now everything's still standing. It's <laughs> <laughs> tempting fate here. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, we're gonna briefly uh, get an update uh, about the new library study committee. Uh, I did not tune in to that, but uh, John, can you give us just a quick, uh, just a quick idea of like where we're at? Uh, well, last night was the last meeting for the committee, uh, so it's basically done. The, the only thing we're waiting for now is for the final report, uh, which totaled, I think they said 133 pages, uh, to be printed, bound, and then distributed. So the plan is to distribute it to the Board of Selectmen, Board of Finance, the library trustees, and then there'll be a few extra copies of each of the libraries. Is there an electronic version? There will be an electronic <laughs> accessible <laughs> version also. Uh, everything's set up as PDFs. So the, the most of the document is all appendices. So it's all the things that we referenced to, to <laughs> as we went through the, the process. So uh, the actual body of the reports only like 10 or 11 pages, mm -hmm. the rest of it is the appendices. Yeah, reference. Is there a, a, a summary of the survey results somewhere? Or is that the There's, it's in the, it's in the, the, it's in the report, mm -hmm. in the yeah. appendix. So uh, we tried to structure the report so that everything that we referenced or looked at was delivered as part of the report. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's, I don't know, 12, 14 appendices, there's, there's quite a few. So um, uh, one of the members was gonna drop it off at Staples today, probably. So it should be available you know, sometime next week. I don't know when it's gonna be available on the web, but that should be fairly forthcoming. Yeah, it'd be great if we could all get a chance to <clears throat> To take a look at it. Yeah, the new library study it's committee is shooting next. to present to the board of selectmen on the seventh of December, oh. which is a Wednesday at the board of selectmen meeting. Uh, they gave us the seventh or the twenty-first, and everyone was trying to avoid Christmas, so mm -hmm. they, they uh, were going to try to, to get us into the is the first item on, or one of the first items on the agenda on the, the seventh to uh, 
to, you know, to deliver the report and ask any and answer any questions that the, the board is likely to have. Yeah, probably good to keep the momentum going too, mm -hmm. you know. So December. Is there a summary um, of what they found? Uh, well, I mean, it's in the report. Basically, the uh, committee looked at the two buildings as they exist and uh, went through the state's worksheet. The, the state has a kind of a rule of thumb that uh, based on population, if you're under 10,000 people in your community, uh, your library should have 1.6 square feet per person. So uh, that would, we're uh, around 9,000. Uh, when Michael went through the report with a couple of the people and filled it out, he came out with 16,837 square feet or something. Uh, the two buildings now are about 10,100 square feet total. Um, one of the sites which the uh, Irene asked us to look at was the basement of the municipal <laughs> office complex. Mm -hmm. That's only 9,325 square feet. So it's, Thank God. it's actually smaller, a smaller space than what the two buildings are today. Mm -hmm. uh, both buildings have problems in terms of trying to expand because of the limited lot size and the environmental issues. Uh, wetlands in the back here and ledge at the Rathbun. Mm. Uh, both parking lots are way too small and need to be larger. Um, so uh, unfortunately, the conclusion is these buildings aren't really going to be useful for 21st century libraries. They're just, they're, they weren't designed in a different age and they're very inflexible spaces and we can't really enlarge them. Um, the library uh, trustee board actually looked at the church property uh, before the daycare moved um, four or five years ago when we did that. Mm -hmm. But that's a really tiny lot and it was, wouldn't be large enough to do anything here. Um, the, at the Rathbun, the owner of the former uh, National Bank of New England Bank of America building um, one of the members talked to him and he was open to discussing. Uh, it's Gelston you know, bought it, you know. But because uh, he apparently knows the individual. Uh, but he, you know, real estate's expensive. And if you're going to build on, it's cheaper to build a new building than it is to, to try to retrofit. So, then we looked at all the build, all of the properties, basically along Town Street, uh, from uh, Mount Parnassus this way, to try to find uh, plots of a couple of acres or so uh, that were available, and there aren't very many. And the couple that we found, the people wanted, you know, a million dollars for their, their mm -hmm. they, they have very high expectations for what their properties are worth. Um, we looked at uh, a property on the corner of Joe Williams Road, uh, but that was the, one of the committee's charges was to find a central location. Mm -hmm. So we had some discussion about what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Because does it mean central to the schools and the municipal office complex or set central to kind of the boundaries of the town? And we felt it was more so the boundaries of the town. So the town has three properties that have sufficient space <coughs> to build a library. Uh, at the senior center, it would be the large flat area where the walking path is. Unfortunately, the area along the driveway on the right as you're going in, is wetlands, so you can't build it. over the walking area. The the other, that's the second place. Okay. There would be to take the hill where the gazebo is presently located, uh, knock that down some, and uh, 
build the building there and shorten maybe the, the walking track. But the final decision as to where the, the new library, if we build one, will be constructed is not in the purview of the new library study committee. It will be the building committee that they, the town will form. Yeah. So this right. is yeah. just recommendations. So these are just, mm -hmm. these are just recommendations. So uh, the, the primary site that we recommended was the property adjacent to the grain shaw on town street because where the lions have their auction because it's a relatively oh, yeah. flat yeah. piece yeah. of property <laughs> and it's you know a few miles closer to Hadlime and Mount Parnassus and Lake Hayward than Rudis is. Mm -hmm. um, Heritage Park area at, at uh, the senior center. And the third prop, third look, possible location is at the municipal office complex. There's potentially, I think, one site, some people think two um, sites there. Uh, one site would be what the town calls their overflow parking. So adjacent to the hedges that are on the, the this side of the, the property, the north side of the property. Um, but if you're trying to do 25 foot setbacks and every, I don't know that you could get a building in there along with the rest of the space, the state, once. Yeah. I'm going to interrupt because we have other things to uh, discuss tonight, but that, that is the, those are the top three possibilities yeah. and, you know, like whether we can or can't fit, you know, the future library and, you know, again, that, that comes down to the building decide. committee um, and the report um, that will be available online and, you know, available as a hard copy in a couple, in a week or so, um, you know, it, it'll explain all the details of the parameters they used to, to kind of figure out what was a potential and why, why that was recommended. But we couldn't see recommending a privately held piece of property and having to spend a half a million, a million dollars to go buy something if the town already owns mm -hmm. plots of property that are, are large enough to support the, the mm -hmm. building. Mm -hmm. So you that's know, no, no need to drive my taxes higher to go buy some property from somebody. Yeah. So, um, and all of, uh, or almost all of the uh, meetings that had taken place are available um, online and the minutes are posted. Um, and, you know, you can, uh, and the public is welcome to attend that December 7th presentation to the Board of Selectmen. So it sounds like it's going to be another 20 years. <laughs> we don't know. We don't know. You're an optimist. <laughs> <laughs> the new world order in new town. It wasn't the same well, town as One of the things ago. that we did four or five years ago when this board did their study was they had talked to Cindy, the finance director at the time, and we're trying to plot when the town was going to free up some bonding money. Mm. And there was a bonding issue for a school that was going to be coming done. And it was mid this decade. So it was 20, 2025, 2026 ish. I don't recall it exactly. So the idea was to try to drop in the library once that, so that the effect on the taxes is, is reduced. So go to the, go to the town committee, mm -hmm. and town meeting, and you, know, not, you can not, find out more. Double, double up on the bonding, so, yeah. Yeah. you know, and then there's, you know, as you've seen in the news, there's fire department issues, there's mm -hmm. every agency in the town has something or other that they need construction. Yeah. Okay, uh, we're gonna um, move on and just keep tabs on how the how this goes. Hopefully some of us will attend on the seventh the Board of Selectmen meeting. Um, so our library 2022 goals, um, we certainly have all been doing our part to try and address our, the future library needs and it's going pretty well. Um, 
improve efforts to reach underserved populations, uh, the survey that was done um, is going to be a handy tool for that. In addition to, um, you know, plan, you know, helping to plan the building, uh, any future library building, or you know, whatever happens here. Um, So does anyone have any other um, things to discuss about improving efforts to reach underserved populations now, or uh, maybe we can uh, talk about the survey in December? Yeah, once we've seen it. Yeah, um, we, had the, we had survey results so at the last okay. meeting, um, but I, you know, not everyone was there, so um, we can recirculate them. Yeah. yeah, and actually, you know, if you can, uh, I th were they, in Included with the email for November's meeting? For November's meeting, I believe they were. Um, but if, I can resend them. Yeah, it's yeah, you can resend them. Answer, yeah. I can resend them. Yeah. 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 But it is, it's interesting. It is interesting. Yeah. Um, and and the, um, it was also interesting that it was a, a successful survey result and that there was a more than expected response, but also that uh, it was almost 50 50 people who chose to respond online versus people who chose to respond with the paper copy, yeah. um, you know, so that, you know, sort of is like, yeah, I think we reached all the demographics in town and it's, yeah. it's good information. I think it's balanced good information that, that went into that survey. So yeah, that'll be a good, uh, let me make a note to make sure that ends up on December's agenda. I think that's interesting. It tells us about how to reach people that it really is. 50% are taking it from the paper, reading the paper and getting that, and 50% are using social media or going online and doing it. That's really interesting. Yeah, so, yeah that's a, it's a good, a good tool. It'll yeah. be a good tool going, going forward. Um, and then uh, become more effective trustees. And I think I might hand this over to you. Um, I mean, I think the current thing, we, we have been talking about trying to find a way, the recommendation, we've been looking at the roles, the recommendation is that the board has a liaison for each of the friends groups and the friends have somebody that's coming here. And that's, of course, always been a struggle. And I don't per se have a solution to this right now. And it may be that, you know, as they're having events, what's most welcome is us offering to assist with those events. Um, I mean, this might be something that becomes a little bit easier if we are moving forward with a new library facility yeah. mm -hmm. and getting everybody back together. Um, I mean, Mike, you've invited but the French groups here, right? Or I have mentioned up. it from time to time, but and they know they're always welcome and yeah, and the same. I don't know if anyone's able to or if they would even want the board attending. <laughs> they're always up for extra help. Nobody said no when Don showed up to lift boxes at the book sale. And, you know, <laughs> um, when you guys showed up for the, uh, the the tavern talk, nobody said no to that either. So, so I don't know if, if somebody does want to join yeah, one of the friends groups, I think that's optimal. Yes, yes, yes. You know, I think that's optimal. At one point I was, pardon? What did you just say? I went to the board meeting for the Friends of Wrath. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. That's yes. wonderful. Yeah, I used to be on them for the Friends of Rath, but and unfortunately, um, the, the time doesn't work for me anymore. I can't do a four o'clock in the afternoon mm -hmm. with a 40 year old. It would be a little disruptive for the meeting. <laughs> it, and I, I did um, hear from the president that this past meeting that they just had, there were only a couple people that actually were able to show up. So it was like a really short meeting. It's like two and a half hours. <laughs> anyway, yes. This, 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 this one, this this moment. The friends of Rathbun or the HFPL. Yeah, the Rathbun. Yeah, so. with with um, Maureen Tapas. Sure. Yeah, that was a good time. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> okay. How many so people now. are in these friends of? Oh, okay. So then maybe oh, yeah. the time it was. Sorry, I have no, it's okay. It um, yeah. I think. I think EHF maybe there was a committee meeting. They they do a lot of committee meetings. You may have been referencing one of those. Okay, because you said two people at the end couldn't make because the yeah. meeting that I went to, I think there were like four people there. Mm -hmm. It's about a, it's a solid half dozen in the yeah. Friends of Rathman mm -hmm. plus staff. Yeah. And how, they meet like once a month from yeah, what I can month. remember. And yeah, their meeting is two and a half hours long. I may have been exaggerating. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> you just don't have that kind of time. That's why I'm asking. Well, I think that that would be, I mean, in the past when I was in the last like friends and Jane and was <laughs> in the Moodist friends, that was, you know, great for getting the updates and, and the mood and helping each other. So it would be nice if, and I, if somebody did want to join the friends and was looking for something really fun to do, I think that would be fabulous. But of course, that doesn't always work. So. Yeah. That is all I have for effective trustees. All right. Um, I would love them to come back in Hartford next year with um, that conference. It was that the one is the one I found in Hartford that I went to. It was the that was the, Connecticut. Yeah, that was yeah. ACLB. Okay. Yeah, and I found it was really really helpful as a new trustee specifically, which might yeah. be great for the next election cycle mm -hmm. to have at least somebody or maybe two people go to that. I know they're having trouble getting uh, people to be on the ACL ACLB to set these things up. I see. So. Okay. It was great because yeah. they you could pick different kinds of lectures and they were going over the, the role of the trustee, the role of the friends, mm -hmm. uh, future of the library things. But it was the, there's a there's one coming up in April or May for the um, Connecticut Library Consortium. Does one okay. Connecticut Library Association? I'm sorry, Connecticut Library Association does one, that and sure that's that. great for directors, trustees, staff, friends. There's there's something there for everyone. So that'll be in April or May. And then obviously I think attend all of the events that are interesting and relevant to you and be present in the library, I think. All right. Does anyone have any input, thoughts, questions about becoming a more effective trustee? We'll just keep it, keep hounding Michael about these conferences coming See, up. I'm good. It's April 30th through May 2nd. So it is both April and May. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <good>. 2023. <laughs> when is the next conference? That's going to be in Mystic. They do it at the Marriott Hotel in Mystic. It's actually a really nice yeah. location. And then next year. Going out for lunch is fun. For, oh, okay. yeah. Do you know how many people? Yeah. Uh, Janine, myself, Bill Barney, I know for sure. Probably Mary, because you were nominate appointed okay so probably four will be out mm -hmm. so we don't have to start thinking about that until no i was just curious like how it ran because i'm trying to think soon so we need so to start half thinking half? about it mm -hmm. is it usually like half the people every other no i think it's just heavy because marriage it's, is a two-year appointment three. yeah so it's a little bit off and then we have oh, lost okay. i don't think joanne's was affected I don't know. I think it's a little bit heavy because of just the way that things happened. I think Jane was on a two-year term for a couple of times. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I, oh, okay. I think it got thrown off. How from did she get to six term year? when you were supposed to have to do six? She, she was kept, a yeah. There kept uh, being vacancies from people who were who resigned or oh, passed away. Oh, and she okay. kept jumping yes. on the end of their term. Because you said that that's a state mandate through six yeah. years. Yes, yes, we can't change Just, that. Yeah, Crazy. Mary's appointed. So the, the only way you can get a two-year term is if the position is unfilled and the board of selectmen appoints you, then it would be a two-year term. Gotcha. Okay. Till the next municipal election. But we will have four people that will be up in the next election and finding people will be come up sooner than you think mm -hmm. if it people don't want to run um so we probably need to start thinking about that or at least talk to all the people who are coming up um i mean people started talking about that like january february mm -hmm. like really soon yeah mm -hmm. so nice. if we have people who are not going to serve again we'll probably want to know and if you're one of those people and you're watching Bill this said he couldn't <laughs> and mary think about if you're going to be running again say, was it next, year? Up next year I'm not going to speak uh, for and him. He said it in the meeting. He, he, he mentioned he was not uh, planning on being on. Uh, he doesn't want to be on the building committee. On the building right. committee. Oh. He has okay. mentioned the six year term being a bit long. Right. But, That's right. But again, I'm not going to speak for. Yeah, I know. And if you have to, if you're not affiliated with a certain part, either party, you have to be a write in. So you have to go jump through hoops. I know because that's what happened to me. Mm -hmm. Right. And that took about six months. You can be an unaffiliated voter and run under a party ticket. Though. Right, but they, neither party wanted to um, support me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I, I got because I wasn't yeah. registered. Was I'm registered. I've been uh, unaffiliated or independent since I was 18. So for a few years now. Oh, that's interesting. And both parties called me and said, and when I said, they're like, what are you? You're a Democrat or you're a Republican. I said, no, I'm independent. And they went, I said, I've been independent since I was 18. They're like, but oh, you know that there's an independent it. party. Yes. But I've been independent before it became a party. Yeah. So it's, yeah. So it's unaffiliated. Yeah. 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 Unaffiliated. Yeah. Does it anyway. change it? Yeah. You go to the town clerk and yeah. change it. Yeah. Everybody bothers me with Texas stuff. Yeah. I would have just, yeah, because yeah. she ran out. Of I'm unaffiliated. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, how did she get a party? Fine. <laughs> so and then they said I only needed two people to vote for me. And I told everybody. And with a name like Van Valkenburg, it was interesting. <laughs> Chris Fan, Christie, Christine. Oh, the right ins were all sketchy. Well, they had to they had to write oh, yes. oh, oh, we write yeah. James. Yeah. 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 You did write Jane, right? Because I remember have memorizing how to spell her last name. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so we okay. all have four people on yeah. Yes, and it was the four people you mentioned earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right, yeah. So never, never too early to start thinking about those things. Uh, mm -hmm. But Start thinking in, about elections. <laughs> but in our immediate future, we have some unfinished business that really is a priority to work on this evening, and that is finalizing the committees and the calendars uh, for the next year coming up. So I'll speak to the committees first, if that's okay. Yeah. Um, and in the last meeting, it was discussed or suggested that I'll just say what the suggestion is. And I'm hoping we can finalize today the recommendations, and that is finance exactly as it was last year. Our very experienced Dawn and John and Bill, as long as you're happy where you are. And I mean, all of this said, anybody can attend any meeting. Mm -hmm. If you want to pop into finance, I'm, they'll happily have you. Um, the recommendation is governance, Janine, myself, and Chris. And then program Mary, Crystalise, and Alice. Mm -hmm. So the nice thing about sh Chris shifting over to governance will be we'll have three on each committee, which is perfect for quorum or if somebody's out, you know, a two-person committee is mm -hmm. a little bit challenging with that. So that'll be nice to have mm -hmm. three of us. Mm -hmm. in, so two people makes quorum. Does anybody have any changes or a different committee they thought they wanted to be on or not happy with those committee recommendations? I just wondered if we had to meet every month. You don't have to. No. That's so for saying. example, in the summertime, um, taking I think a month or two off governance does in the summertime, there's just not that much going on for governance. Right. Um, the other thing you can also plan the meetings. And then I think finance has done this once or twice mm -hmm. where there literally is not any, there's no budget stuff happening. You just cancel. So you cancel it. It's yeah. easier to cancel the meeting than it is to get it on the town calendar. Mm -hmm. um, one Chris, thing is if you don't have it scheduled, you have to hold it as a special meeting. Right. Unless and then you got a it. special meeting, you can just yeah. do what is on your, your agenda. You can't add change nothing you have to do only what's on the yeah. agenda where mm -hmm. if you have a regular meeting you were able to add items yeah so scheduling more than so you think bill convinced us that it's better to schedule the whole year and if you just don't have enough to yeah do, and you, you realize just, just give it a couple weeks meeting. and cancel it how do you i mean you've been on program for a long time do you have thoughts on you know is there a down season for program it's a well I think because of the fact that it's ramping up again, um, but the summer, it kind of switches. It's one of those things like things like there's months that we probably, I can't say season, but there's probably a month. I'll say January and February are hard. Yeah. Yeah, there's not a lot going on. People don't want to leave the houses. It's right. cold, it's snowy. Yeah. So Because it's after the holidays. <laughs> oh, <no, really. laughs> exactly, exactly. After the holidays, and people yeah. are like, Right, you know, you know yeah. been on, you know, nonstop since like basically September, October. Yeah. Yeah, governance means January, but we don't meet February. We take a month off. Mm. Finance uh, has to stay on top of things because of the budget, um, but we generally 
uh, take. I was going to say in the summer, in the summer in July, a couple August. months, we August. don't, yeah. we either meet or don't generally mm -hmm. not because there's just nothing. Yes, I want to go to concerts. To go. That said, you guys have yeah. a, had it scheduled last year, so I put it in here and I mm -hmm. think yeah, canceled it. So it was on there. Right. Like we were talking about, it's easier to mm -hmm. say we don't need to meet right. than right. It's January. We have nothing to talk about as program. You know, let's cancel. Mm -hmm. That's the easier way to do it. But I think we try to have at least more than six meetings. I mean, at least every other month at a minimum, I would say, for mm -hmm. all the committees. It cuts down on the time at these meetings rather than having to go over every program, every financial piece, right. have a committee yeah. get a report. Like, unless you want to have a three hour meeting, and <laughs> Dawn remembers those when we first formed the <laughs> library board. The meetings would be like three hours long and the committees were just as, you know, everything was being done by the whole board. So once the committees got really, you know, yeah. set up and sort of giving reports, it really cuts down on your time. Mm -hmm. So so if everybody's happy with the committees, at least for the time being, I mean, that doesn't say someone can always resign from a committee. There's nothing that says yeah, you can't. It's, it's not prison. Yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> and you can always attend any other committee meeting that you want to. They are all open and you can read anything from any committee. Um, what we'll, we will need in next month's meeting is a chair and a secretary for each committee. So somebody to run the meeting and somebody to say- And just to let you know, like for programming, I just kind of did both because- I did both for a while for yeah. governance as well, the first year I was on it. Yeah, so it can be the same person. It doesn't need to be two people. Michael, do you attend all the committee meetings, all the subcommittee meetings? Yeah, it's more productive if I'm there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And can you hold a meeting um, by Zoom for a subcommittee? So the public needs to have a chance to attend and participate. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think that's, that's the catch. Mm -hmm. Typically what we would do in those situations, like I know we've done some governance meetings, mostly via Zoom. The physical location is me in the library, and if the public wants to attend, right. they're there, but the right. members can zoom in. Right. But you have mm -hmm. to have a spot for the public to go and participate because it's a public meeting. Yeah. Okay. I pay my taxes, right? <laughs> so that's it for committees. Um, so the next month, governance will be asking for the, the chairs and secretaries for each one of those committees. Am I talking about the calendar as well? Uh, yeah. yeah. You did say calendar. Okay, so the calendar. Um, I did go through the calendar and I and I found John's lovely one from last year. And I used your template and <laughs> I filled it out for this year. I haven't heard any requests from anybody. So what I did is keep it the way that you guys had it from the last, from the October meeting, having finance being the Monday before the library board meeting, mm -hmm. having programming the first Monday of the month, and governance at 9 a.m. on a Wednesday, which is not what that said, but it will stay at 9 a.m. on a Wednesday morning. Okay. The week of, with the dial-in option, with the um, the same week the board meets. So we're actually meeting the same day as the, as the board meeting is what it does. Mm, not if it's a Wednesday. Yeah, and so this is the other part, is oh, that okay. in the last meeting we, not we, the board discussed changing the day oh, of the oh. board meeting. And I don't know if everybody was able to take a look at that or, or read the minutes from October, mm -hmm. but Michael has some conflicts where him being there on a Thursday is going to be problematic and having the director there is optimal. Thursday, at least through March, so. At least optimal. Yeah. So for the sake of consistency, we're not going back and forth the proposal is to move the library board meeting to Wednesday at 6.30, the exact same time um, for the entire calendar year of 2023. So would that, oh, so next month, December? Next month's the same normal January. Thursday. So January, January, so it'll be you know. the 11th of January be the yeah, first meeting? Okay. Exactly. And I wrote it all down. And I guess, is there any discussion on that Wednesday? Is that not work for anybody? As long as it's, is it like this? Second, the second. As long Wednesday. as it's the second, the that's second fine because I have a work one at, three, uh, at on the third Wednesday. <laughs> that's at seven o'clock at night. So, so so far it sounds like, and I think in the last meeting you said that most everybody was okay with the Wednesday. 
So it sounds like, and people can protest again one last time in December when I, we should circulate this out, circulate this after this meeting. But for now, we'll tentatively say we're moving to the Wednesdays at 6.30. Mm -hmm. So that will make governance on the same day as the board meeting, which is fine. It works nicely to present to present things. Be fresh okay. in your mind. Yeah. <laughs> um, finance, you do have one conflict with a federal holiday, and that is October 9th. Mm -hmm. It is Columbus Day or Indigenous Peoples Day or whatever. Yeah. But it is a holiday. Do you want to... You need to make it on the Tuesday, John. Mm -hmm. Tuesday. Yep. So just be on the tenth. Yep. That's right. our that's our plan. If the that's holiday falls year. on a Monday, we we just switch it to the Tuesday. And Tuesday. program has one conflict in September, and it's Labor Day, the fourth. And you probably would like to change that meeting to another day, either the following Monday, which would be September eleventh, or you can change it to a Tuesday. I'll talk to them, get back to you by next week. Okay. Yeah, next or meeting. you can send me an email and then I can circulate a, okay. a calendar. We'll rotate back and forth between EHFPL and Rathbun just as we did this year. Um, I am going to pass this around. I'll also email it if you guys want to write on it or take a look at it or see anything strange or that I missed. And this will be reviewed and officially approved hopefully in December so we can get that to the town and to Deb and up for the entire calendar year of 2023. Now, are we ever gonna be at the ref? Because we've been yep. here. Back and forth. Initially, we were here with COVID because the space restrictions and the room is being used for storage at Rathbun. So we weren't able to meet there and we weren't sure when we were going to be. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, we're going to rotate back and forth between Rathbun and, and the HFPL for the meetings. Last, last meeting was at Rathbun. Yeah, last month's meeting was at Rathbun. Yes. Uh, Bill had suggested that um, the early months, like January to mm -hmm. June, be um, at Rathbun, no, here. And then from July on, it would so be like a at six Rathbun. month, six month. Yeah, rather than anybody losing track of where they're supposed to be. <laughs> I mean, I'm fine either way. It's anybody else really likes that or has a strong opinion. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm fine either way. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. I think it's, you know, just important that we keep in touch with both branches. Yeah, exactly. And not, uh... and that's the one nice thing about going back and forth is instead of you don't see one branch for six months is that you are visiting that branch at least. <laughs> and seeing the facility every so often if it's going back and forth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Did you the update meeting? the holiday list? Hmm? Did you update the holidays? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Still says 2022. Oh, I did this. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing this last night. I was doing all the homework last night. I'm going through the manual. And I'm look at it. So I will miss. I will change this to 22. <laughs> But I did change the, all the individual uh -huh. dates. Uh -huh. <laughs> you want to take a look? Did you see? Oh, yeah. So I'll circulate like that. Mm -hmm. That's why I know they said eyes is always good. Mm -hmm. That's why it's a draft. Mm -hmm. I like the ones you write a sentence, you think that the word's there, you're even reading it with the word in the sentence, and you didn't actually write it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, that happens all the time. <laughs> I used to write manuals and then put it aside because it took months to write it and go back and look and go, what was I thinking? <laughs> this yeah. is like, yeah. it made sense word, at the time, but that. it's mm -hmm. hard. It's, it's, yeah. Even on email, you know, people don't go back and proofread. No. No. Yeah. Yeah. They're too quick to hit the send button. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and, then the, and then just when you think when you think you've typed everything right, and then there's autocorrect helping you. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. See, here's my work. <laughs> <laughs> According to autocorrect, my sister Jerry is is durable. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. My mother-in-law, whose name is Marilyn, is Maryland. And I stopped correcting it, so I just wrote Maryland call today. <laughs> <laughs> just leave the little red line underneath it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
All right, so I think we make good progress when governance is meeting uh, next yes. month. And uh, hopefully we can just vote on that yes. next month. And when are we meeting in governance? Business will be done. 9 a.m. the Wednesday before the board meeting. Okay. Uh, sure. So that'll be, and I'll include you in the, in the email. That will be. So that would be the 7th. December 7th. Yes, December 7th at 9. Boom. Very happy. Oh. I'm volunteering at the elementary school all day. Okay. I can't With his it. wife. Yeah, no. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let's we'll make sure Janine makes it. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> um, one thing that I was, has a crossed my mind on occasion is um, if there was an alternate for the different subcommittees, would that be helpful to make quorum or does that actually sway it in a bad direction? Like, I, I'm wondering if I could just like technically be an alternate on the, and then if you know you're not gonna yeah, make quorum, right, you know, like I could attend, but you know, maybe, but I think that might make it even more difficult because since we're all board of trustees, we, you can attend any of them. Yeah, no, I'm just talking about making. Uh, right, uh, right. Um, if you know, like, I can't go, so then you can go, but then she can't go, then I can go. You know, does, does it have to be a specific, a designated person? Or can, can we just say any form. board of trustee yeah. member? Yeah, no, and I think you have to make committee forum. Yeah. Oh, I mean, okay. at least the way the manual's written. Yeah, it needs to be. So three actually is kind of the magic number for the subcommittees, I think. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think so too. Let's see how it goes. I'm thinking the shift and having three on each would solve the problem. Mm -hmm. Because when we have two, it's difficult because one person is has a conflict or yeah. now you've only got one person left. You can't have a meeting with one person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Although I, did. <laughs> I didn't know it was not a, not a meeting after I had the meeting. <laughs> All right. Any other questions about that? You know, we have even feel free Still on new business. Uh, uh, unfinished, oh, yeah, unfinished. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, and you can, it's not any violation of anything to like share information with Juliana between now and the December meeting. If, if yeah, yeah, just if you're sharing a conflict or something like like that. Yeah, so for the calendar. Right? So stay in touch with the calendar. Yeah, make sure I'll send an email to everybody. So yeah. to kind of prompt that. So we have one email yeah. with the calendar in it. Maybe, maybe it'll be responding to the to the minutes mm -hmm. and I'll say here's this you know give me your dates um any conflict and if some and program just has to look at that or talk about amongst yourselves about that Labor Day conflict but yeah please keep in touch about that because it does have to get done the next month um all right so that brings us to new business I have to yes wait wait so the ALA conference is coming up. This sort of falls under similar to the effective trustees, January 27th to 30th in Louisiana. And my proposal, I guess I'm just suggesting that it might not be a bad idea to have Michael register. There is a digital option. It's $380 just to make sure that our library director is current and what's going on in, in libraries. And you did attend it last year, right, digitally? So last year, the year two before, years ago, but it, yes, ago. I've attended it, attended it digitally in the past. It's it's helpful. I like it. Um, the the panels are really good. The experts are amazing. I wonder if there's a way to even share that code out with either the staff or and or with you guys too, if it's a digital option. Yeah, I was just yeah. looking at it and thinking right. about you know our continuing education and that sort of thing. He should also have right yeah. theoretically the option at least to digitally have the mm -hmm. content for what's happening. But absolutely with library directors. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's something I can propose to finance committee or how this fits into the budget. Or, in the budget. It's in the budget. Is it already in there? Yeah, it's uh, there's a conference line in the budget, and I believe it's is it a thousand dollars or five hundred dollars? But it's yeah, this is three eighty. Is this something that you would want to attend? And yeah, absolutely. That and is this something uh, the CLA would be great too. We don't have to. We don't even have to. Yeah, okay. it's budgeted. It's budgeted. It's budgeted. Okay. That's in the budget. Perfect. So, so you that's her. We, we don't have to. Do we don't have to. Yeah, we don't have to vote on it, but we can nag all we want. <laughs> <laughs> no. So that was my suggestion. And we will yes. expect the report. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> we really just, no, we can't. 
be in a bubble, especially with, uh, you know, what we're proposing for our the future. It just makes it so much easier when they're digital conferences to say, hey, we can actually, uh, you know, people can attend these things. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. You know, my husband's attending a digital conference for medicine, which never, I mean, this thing was always in person. Now suddenly there's a digital option. Mm -hmm. They're like, here's your login. <laughs> as long as there's no digital surgeries. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Robotics. Yeah. Robotics. Right. It's not digital, but yeah. I, yes. I, I, bet, I bet that's a, I bet that's I, I a just, lecture. When my <laughs> friends called and said, oh, I'm having robotics. Mm -hmm. They just take an x-ray and put it in the robot. Wow. Yeah. Microbiologists can work from home now. Sure. That's crazy. I'm that's serious. Yeah, you want it, you want you want your doctor, your surgeon's going in though. Because yeah. what if something goes? That's great until something goes wrong. Exactly. And then you like want a power failure. Power failure. Just saying. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. 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 The end of says good until <laughs> hey, until it's not. Hey, yeah, it scares me. So you've had printer jams, right? Now we have a surgery bot jam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but sur surgery robots have to go through FDA, which means their code has been checked like 5,000 ways to Sunday. Yeah, we hope so. <laughs> Same thing can happen if your surgeon sneezes. Someone hacks it. All these lovely hey, guys. I, well, yeah. I, I, I'll keep it to myself, but I, I, I have something relevant to say. All right. Um, do we have an audience of citizens? We do not. I will right. double check the uh, sending an email to them, but we do not. Nope. Oh, I got a construction alert for the swing bridge. Hello, oh, tomorrow, tomorrow night at 11 p.m. Tomorrow night. Yeah, oh, that, 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 have, Saturday. that is going to have no effect on me. No, nope. it's 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 until it's so not open at 8 o'clock on Saturday. Oh, yeah. no. Exactly. Is it close no, that's, tomorrow that's during the day? day? I was like, no. I teach like Sunday. 11 o'clock tomorrow night. I teach tomorrow night. But I come home. They have to rebalance the bridge. So I'm home. Oh, that's well before. I guess that's even after a break. Why are they going to Portland? Portland. Oh, no. Winds. Oh, that's so mm. <laughs> they may have to reschedule if it's, if it's as windy as it is with the storm. You oh, may see them cancel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And that's in the rain, right? Yeah. It's supposed yeah, to pour. <sighs> I, go, I go through the hop yard and get on 154 <laughs> and then come over. And it's the same amount of time as going across East Adam and getting on it. I don't, I'm terrified of that bridge. <laughs> yeah, but it depends where you're going. One of the uh, yeah. people on the study committee board lives in Hadland, and she worked at Brainerd. Yeah. Oh, when the bridge nice. is closed, that's going to stink for her because yeah. she's going to have to go all the way around. Oh my God. I'm gonna, and I was mad at Hop on 95. I teach in Middletown and I live in Hadland, and I'm like, mm -hmm. that's even worse. Well, we've got staff mm -hmm. members that live across the bridge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I feel sorry for uh, Goodspeed and Gilston and mm -hmm. um, yeah, well, not Levita. No. Oh, too soon. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> <What? laughs> yeah. oh Levita is yeah. 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 and the and town. town. And town. Yeah. 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 Has real to hard to to I'm going to reopen something there. Oh, okay. I was reading all the things. I'm like, oh no, where's my name? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Levita <laughs> already got new people. Yeah. Someone already bought it. Yeah. Oh, Levita. Yeah. Town Tavern? No, not Levita. Levita. I vote Mexican. Are we still live? We need another pizza place, and yes, we are. <laughs> we need another pizza place. <laughs> we need Obviously. more pizza, ice cream, and booze. Because yeah. we don't have enough of those things. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, oh, I thought we were done. <laughs> no, no, no. You better do that right now. <laughs> yes, we're adjourned. Is there any objection? No, no. So many objections. <laughs> <laughs>